Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Kelly Sparks. Hey, Gary. Hey, dude. You can barely see it with this shirt. Kind of blends in. Anyway. All right. So, hey, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the Jim Beam series that I did. Next week, I'm going to try to get through a Knob Creek series. Um, I borrowed some stuff from a friend. Uh, so, I'll be able to test different age knob creeks against each other new versus the old the age statements the higher age statement versus the younger so we'll do that next week finish up november with pretty much knob creek so we're at the end of the week well what's oh shit that's the wrong month i can't see it the numbers are too small so i mean it's friday the 20th we're at the end of this week We've got one more week and a few days. We've got 10 days, 11 days left. Uh, I probably won't post anything over the weekend. I'll just record some stuff and get it ready. Start my new job next week at the tire shop. So making money again, so that's always good. But anyway, that's coming up next week. What I have for you today is a final review over Michter's Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon aged 10 years, 10 years old. now. This is obviously a bottle I've had for a while. I'll post a link to the original review above so you can go back and you can watch that one. This one is barrel number 18G1024. So I purchased this roughly two years ago whenever I first started really getting into bourbon. And I've had it for two years. <laughs> Pretty self explanatory. So. You can go watch my original thoughts on it. Uh, however, this is this is a good example why I feel like if you like something, set it free. No. <laughs> if you love something, set it free. But if you like a good bourbon and you think it's just absolutely just wonderful when you first get into it, save you about two ounces and then wait about two years and then try it again and see what's changed so that's what we're going to do today all in all it smells delicious now these single barrels are bottled at 94.4 proof 47.2 percent alcohol for you other folks nose smells delicious it smells like a nice pretty bourbon it's not really not any single characteristic jumping out at me it just smells really freaking good so I'm gonna give it a little sip on the palate the first time around I don't believe now I haven't gone back and watched the original video but on that first sip there was a lot of nutty funkiness that I get. And no, I have not been drinking any Jim Beam today, so don't assume that. I haven't had it. It's literally the first thing I've had today. And it's a lot lighter on the palate than I remembered. And maybe because of the lower proofing. But it's this was one of the highest, whenever I was still rating whiskeys, I try not to rate them anymore. I mean, I'll give my opinion of them. So if you are in line with my opinion, you'll be like, oh, okay, well, I should try that. Or, man, Kelly doesn't like it. I usually kind of agree with him on most things. Probably should stay away from that. Uh, but now, at this point in my, my whiskey experience, yeah, I would not rate it near as high as I did the first time and it could have been the ambiance of the whiskey that led to me rating it higher than what it should be I don't know but I don't feel like it should deserve as high of a rating as I gave it the first time but anyway it's still a good bourbon I don't know if it's worth 120 bucks a 10 year old I mean you might be able to get some 10 year olds for 120 <laughs> <laughs> child trafficking jokes are the worst anyway I'm gonna get one more sip 
I'm gonna call it a day. Maybe two more sips. We'll see. I think if I was still rating whiskeys, I'd probably still give it a 90 plus, or at least close to a 90, because it's got everything there. The flavor, the characteristics, all that. It's got okay mouthfeel. It kind of goes away. It's not super heavy and creamy, uh, and it kind of it kind of fades really quick. But it's like I said, it's a single barrel, but it's a limited release, so they're single barrels. It's not like a not like a Knob Creek single barrel, where they just have these batches of barrels. Like okay, these are all going to be single barrels next year. This one, it's specially numbered. It would be like a Knob Creek barrel pick. That would probably be equivalent. Uh, whereas somebody went in, picked certain barrels, and then decided to use that one for a specific place. So it would be similar to that. Uh, but yeah, it's man, there's a lot of vanilla coming through. What I'm trying to do, and I will advise this to everybody, you might get you a glass like this. You could do it with a Glencairn, but it's a lot harder. But this one, you can kind of take both hands and cup it. You're supposed to bring it in close. I don't think that's gonna, that feels awkward to me, whatever. But if you cup it and warm it up with your hands, it'll help bring some of the flavors out. So if you try to taste whiskeys at room temperature or colder, you're not gonna get much and it's gonna be a little different, so. Um, so warming it up, yeah, you know, there's a lot of vanilla on the back end of that one. That was weird. But warming it up will help tremendously. So all in all, what I, I think, my opinion of this bourbon, my final thoughts on this bourbon is, if you find one for retail, probably buy it. If you've got the extra money, don't go missing a, a, a light bill because you bought a Mictor's 10 year. If you've got some extra money and you see it for right around retail price, I think it'd be a good purchase. Me, on the other hand, I'm probably never gonna purchase another one. Uh, just because I've had it. Like things that I purchase more, like if I purchase a whiskey multiple times, the same one, it's because I plan on drinking it a lot and there's some value. <laughs> like. There's some monetary value in there. Like this is, I've had this for two years. I spent 120 bucks on it. That's usually about the time frame I hold on to a whiskey whenever I spend over $100 on something. It usually lasts for about two years, give or take. Um, this one, I just kind of stuck it behind a bunch of other bottles and forgot about it. But all right, I'm gonna get one more sip, see if anything's changed, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Yeah, the nose is actually kind of fire, it, it kind of livened up. So that's why I'm, I'm all about warming up the whiskeys now. I need to get a little bottle warmer, a little heat pad, a little little heating, little just like a koozie or something for my bottles. All right. Again, I would say it is a really good bourbon. I don't feel like it's the best or near the best that I've ever had. But I think it's a solid high eight, low nine bourbon any day of the week. I can't justify the price for you, so that's all on you. But I think it would be a good addition to someone's someone's liquor cabinet if they are a collector. So. Anyway, that's all I got. So, thanks for watching my final thoughts on Mictor's 10 year. Don't forget, stay tuned next week for the Knob Creek series coming up. We'll finish out the month of November with Knob Creek, and then December we are starting the 24 Whiskey Advent Calendar. 24 day Whiskey Advent Calendar. Scotch Whiskey Advent Calendar. So it's gonna be 24 days of Scotch. Um, thanks to Brock Peterson again. Thanks to all my patrons. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like the video, subscribe, share with your friends. Check out the Bearded Idiots. Like always, folks, drink some whiskey, share it with your friends and family. Be safe, don't drink and drive, take care, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.